All right. So this is introduction to on um, my name is Desi. You can call me Desiree. You can call me DJ. Um, I'm just here um, to share information. This information is provided to you by Grow with Google in partnership with Reform Alliance. Um, and we're doing everything we can to help build strong, resilient um, economic systems. And so Google has been very supportive with helping not only small business owners, people that are returning back to the workplace and starting businesses, and as well as justice impact to communities and veterans. So I'll get right to it. Build your professional brand. This is very important because obviously we want to make money. We don't want to rely on external sources all the time for those um, streams of income. And building a professional brand off top is essential to successful business modeling, especially in the online environment. So we want you to think of a company that you like, um, whether that's something like Google, whether it's a company that's a small um, enterprise or Etsy or something like that, just visualizing your mind, a company that you like, and we could think, what does it look like? You know, um, what images come to mind when you think about the company? Um, you know, you see how Wendy's has that in their collar, that mom symbol, you know, it, it speaks to the subconscious mind and, and gives you those feelings of home or, you know, tasty food, whether the food is that way or not. It, it automatically communicates that through their branding. Um, who is their ideal, ideal customer? You know, what is their target audience and what what is your target audience? What sets your product apart from your competitors? And that's really important as well. We know there's loads of different bread brands out there, ketchup brands, name it. It's not like somebody takes a spot and you can no longer take that spot as well. But what will make you stand out? Um, a lot of times that's your marketing and your branding. How does their advertising make you feel? You know, going back to Wendy's or other types of brands that give you a, a comfortable feeling and some branding may be off-putting. So it's really important to consider all that. And how consistent is that? You know, a lot of brands, they don't change their logos very often. Um, they're pretty consistent with it, um, even though we're not trying to start corporations all the time. And some of you may be wanting to start a corporation, but it is still important to be relatively consistent in your branding, acknowledging that you'll grow and ideas will evolve, but consistency is always key. So the customers always know how to recognize your services. Okay. So a lot of companies, they put in millions of dollars into having specialists build their brands. Um, and over time, it benefits them, but we want to start on a small scale using these tools that Google provides. We can build brands that are solid and recognizable and valuable in all spaces. Um, what is your professional brand? I think this is important. Like, um, I think of a famous Jay-Z quote. He said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Like you are your business. So if you if you do, if you do hair, um, if you do lashes, if you're a fashionista or stylist, what you do, the way you present yourself to the world, is like a walking billboard for the brand that you represent. So if you're a public speaker or if you're a an advocate for a particular thing, you don't want to misrepresent yourself in public in a way that would misrepresent the brand that you're trying to build or that you've already built, built for yourself. And I, like I said, I'm going to keep this brief. These are touch points because these are, this is a composite of various lessons that's um, available through Grow, Grow with Google, but this is an introduction. And at a later date, we can get together and just, you know, focus an hour on individual segments. But I think it's really important that we just hit the, hit the important touch points and just keep it moving so that, you know, everyone could just get a taste of this information. All right, so um, does anybody have like a, a public figure that you admire? You know, who are you a fan of? What is it about them that makes you a fan of them? You know, what sets them apart? Does, um, and feel free to put it in the chat. You can come off mute if, if you like. You can come on camera if you like, um, whatever makes you feel comfortable. But, you know, what are, what are some companies or some figures um, and how do they market in, in ways that make you want to, purchase you know how do they how do they impact your decision to patronize them or even follow them on social media because that is that is a form of you know patronage is your energy 
and your attention. Attention is a currency of its own these days, you know. And um, don't feel pressured to answer, but, you know, just consider these things. Viola Davis, yes, that's a good example. That's a very good example because not only does she represent herself so well in fi on film, um, I mean, she gets all the way into a character. Like, it's so hard to separate her from a character when she's acting, but she represents herself equally as well in real life. And she's a great role model. So I love that example. Thank you. Thank you for contributing. Um, so your brand should really be reflected in everything you do, okay? So um, because we're small business owners or aspiring business owners, everything about us is going to be represented these days. Like I say, social media is like our digital hieroglyphs, you know? Um, the way we walk out in the street, you know, people are looking at that. You know, we have cameras everywhere. Social credit is becoming a thing. And people are always watching. So whether you're trying to get a job, you know, your brand should be consistent through your resume, whether you're just, you know, putting the hot words in there, because a lot of it is um, AI algorithm scanning resumes to see exactly what it is that makes you align with that particular role. And your social media posts. A lot of jobs are going to social media to see if you're a good fit, a culture fit for their company, that you're appropriate, you know, what it is that you're into, and your networking conversations as well. You know, people practice their pitches, the elevator speech that, you know, few seconds that they get to make an impression on someone who could be a potential customer or investor. But um, it may be, a, you know, a lateral kind of conversation. You, you and I talking, you know, I'm not a particular, I'm not a connoisseur of anything in particular, but I like to have, make these connections. A connect, I like to be a connection there of sorts. Um, so it's important how you present yourself to not only people that can bring you, you know, a high level of increased finances, but, you know, people that may be able to network with you sideways. Bartering is also important. So those conversations and those connections that you make and the way you represent yourself in the day to day is also very important when you're when you're establishing your brand. Um, three steps to building your brand. Define your brand. What is it that you're presenting to the world? You know? Building your online presence. And we're going to talk a little bit deeper about that. Um, I, like I said, the digital hieroglyphs. What is out there for you? What is your what are your grandchildren going to see about you on Instagram, you know, 50 years from now? Those it'll still be there. Like this data will still be there. So what are you setting out there as you know, as the standard for your online presence? Have you Googled yourself? I mean, take a moment right now, you know, he has some tea or something, take a snack, just take out your phone, Google, Google yourself. And, you know, I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Like, let me know. What do you see about yourself? I Google myself sometimes and it's not always the best thing. And um, it makes you think about like 10, 15 years ago when we didn't know how important social media was going to be. Um, what could have been out there? Some, some people can pay to get things removed and things like that. But and some people have nothing which could be equally as damaging because you want to be found, especially if you want to be a business owner. People need to be able to see you at least on Google. You know, um, hashtag campaigns make you easily be easily findable on social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or any other type of, um, through any other search engine. So um, you can feel free to type some of the things that you see about yourself. Come off mute. Let me know if you see found anything about yourself that was surprising. Um, you can look in images. That's always fun to see what was there. Maybe you find an article about, about yourself in the news. Um, you can even search some, your name on Facebook and things and see what other posts people have made about you. But um, when you Google yourself and you're starting a business, just know that other people are you know, looking you up as well. Growing your network. Um, this is essential and I'm gonna keep it going as we phase into social networks your online presence. All right, so social media is the new town square. I wouldn't even say new at this point. I think that it's been the town square um, digitally for at least 10 years now, and um, it's only gonna get even more, even more virtual. So I think it's really timely that we are having this discussion about online enterprise. So with this, um, social media, you're able to use, you know, if you're using LinkedIn, which is very powerful if you're looking to um, secure a new a new role. Um, it's also really good if you're looking to find other people that are interested in supporting small businesses. Um, people are always on LinkedIn. I always suggest LinkedIn when it comes to business. If you're not on LinkedIn and you're a business person, 
please, people are on there for business. They're not on there just to, you know, post random videos and stuff like that. If they're on there, they, they're meaning they're meaning business to some degree. So um, I think that's really valuable to make sure that you have a LinkedIn account and that your company also has a LinkedIn profile. I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to put it in the chat, um, a folder full of resources as well, because I know that some of you may have to step off early and I don't want anyone to um, to miss anything. Um, all right, all right. So I can't put the folder in here, but what I'll do, I'll email it to you. So even if you jump off early, I'll still have the re these resources for you. And I appreciate y'all for showing up today. It's a little rainy out here on the East Coast. So I know it's hard for people to kind of like do something that's not relaxing right now. But I appreciate you for investing um, this time into yourself and um, in listening to what I have to share today. So video and photo sharing. This is really important. A lot of times you want to post everything and share every single thing that we're doing but as business owners we have to be very selective because again we have to make sure that every single thing that we're sharing in our digital hieroglyphs are accurate representations of the brand that we want to share with the world because it will be found it's not going anywhere um there are new social i think instagram just came out with threads right and it sounds really cool it's just like amazing i guess but it just it just so happens that it came out that threads can't be deleted without also deleting your Instagram account. So be careful for which social media services that you use. And even when you delete it, your data will still be accessible to Meta for, I think, up to 90 days. So just be very careful. There's a new Black-owned app, I think, uh, well, I just joined called Spill that was created by, yes, Spill. So uh, it took me a while to get a code, but I contacted them. And so if you don't have a code to Spill, Bill Mob is a code that will work for you. And it's it's pretty fun. I mean, of course, there's always some um, foolishness going on, but um, it's also still a nice new place to market yourself. And it's always good, great to be like an early adapter because once you're in there, you start building, you're, you know, you're kind of a pioneer in the space and you, you know, your network can grow exponentially from there. Microblogging. And so basically like microblogging is a lot like still with Reds or Twitter. Like people are may not people's attention span have had decreased so much um because <laughs> over the past generation or two um people don't are not sitting down reading blogs like they used to even like even the newspaper but then the blogs and now we're going to micro blogging people like that 140 characters or less and when you're able to uh, micro blog through services like twitter or you know even like adding a nice comment yeah it's interesting which is it's interesting a reading level that of a third grader isn't that crazy what are we doing to ourselves but I mean, we have to meet the people where they are, you know, when it comes to business, we have to adapt. And I think it's good that we could try to keep our attention spans <laughs> as um, don't adapt downward or devolve to that level. But, you know, we just have to meet where they are. And if they only want to read a few characters and watch, not even watch videos anymore, like they only want to watch shorts, you know what I mean? So, you know, we just have to meet them where they are and just try to figure out how to use those tools to get their attention and hook them in really, really quickly. Okay, social media best practices. We just talked about that. Pause before you post. I'm pretty sure all of you in this call are very conscious of this and it's not much that I have to say about that. I don't think that y'all don't seem to be the type that are posting too much foolishness on the on the IG or Twitter. So, um, but you know, you get the point. If you share this information with someone later, just remind them, please, our children, um, people that have, you know, maybe have come out of incarceration may not understand exactly how the landscape works. You can't just post anything. You may have a reaction. You may have a feeling. Don't jump on there. You saw what happened to Kiki Palmer's boyfriend. He's probably eating those words. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you just can't say everything publicly anymore, no matter how you feel. You know, you just have to, you'd have to really pause and think about it. <laughs> you got to think about how it's going to impact your business and your brand. You are the brand. So every single thing that you say matters. And I wish I told myself this 15 years ago. <laughs> okay, lock down your accounts. So personally, I don't lock my social accounts, but if you were someone who has been like, you know, really um, casual with your posting and really personal or, you know, really political and things like that, and you're looking for a job or looking for, you're in a business, a line of business that may be more conservative or and things like that, you know what I'm saying? You might want to just make your social media private. 
because sometimes it's easier to just, you know, put a lock on it than to try to go back and fix it all or delete it and stuff like that. Like, you know, private is an option. I prefer not to keep mine private because like I said, my that is my brand. Like that's, it's my, like, that's my line of commercials is my, my Instagram. You know, I can't necessarily business-wise afford to, afford to keep mine private, but um, if, if you want to, you know, be really personal, it's or even separate. Like so, right now, I have LinkedIn. I have one that's for my nonprofit, one that I say more community-related things to. That's Desi Speaks. But then I also have an aerospace and defense job, and I have DJ Riley, and, and it's a totally separate LinkedIn page, and it has even more engagement. But I'm only talking about things that are related to like, you know, the you know United States and recruiting, and you know aerospace defense type thing. So I try to keep it very, very separate. Not that I don't mind if people find one or the other, but I don't want my job to try to hold me accountable for something that I'm saying in a personal space, if that makes sense. Which they still do, but I'm not going to make it easy for them. So keep perspective. Um, like we just said, we don't want to air all our business on social media. It's not appropriate. Um, and anymore, it's like it's not it's not even beneficial, really. Because if they do roll out with these types of concepts like social credit, like some thoughts are just best kept to yourself or, you know, within your close circles, the world doesn't need to know how you feel about everything. And and if you're, I mean, I think it's important also to speak up about things that you think may impact our, our future and your children. So I understand, like, you know, sometimes your business, if you're a nonprofit leader or a community organizer, is speaking up about things. And so I'm not saying to exist in a space of fear. But just remember who your target is, what your audience is, how they'll receive what you're saying. And also try to you know, maybe just tailor what the message is in a way that makes it a bit more palatable. Okay, so establishing a professional domain and website email for your business. And again, I'm going to put all of this information into a folder. Well, it's in a folder right now. And I'm going to email it to you so that you'll have it in like a um, little handout form. So you don't have to like, you know, remember everything that I'm saying right now. But we know domain, domains are really important because they give businesses credibility online. Um, when you have a domain, you're able to have an email address with that particular extension um, versus like Gmail or Yahoo or AOL or something like that because there's even business services or grants and things like that that won't even allow you to submit or receive their support if you don't have your own custom domain at the end of your email address. A lot of people don't know this. so. I'm not, I, I don't want to give any incorrect information regarding which specific services they are, but um, I, I believe one that um, may, may deal with like NAV or um, like Dunn's number and things like that. From what I remember, you needed to have a business extension at the end of your address in order to um, service. We have somebody join us. Welcome, Dante. I'm not sure if you're here, but... Um, we're happy to have you. I saw a pop-up. I'm not sure if he's here, though. All right. What is a domain name? Um, I'm pretty sure you would. Yeah. Um, but it's basically your virtual address. You know, it's how you're found. It's really simple. Hey, good to nice have comment. you. Um, we're going over like business building 101, starting your brand. Um, hey. <laughs> I hear family in the background. I hear family. Hey, how you doing? So your domain is like your address. That's your virtual address. That's where people want to find you. It um it helps you establish credibility. It helps you to have that correct extension at the end of your email address, so that when you're emailing people, it's not coming from Gmail or one of these other services. It's coming from your brand and sponsors, investors, um, business services, and just general public will take you a lot more seriously when you have that. You know, um, Dante at you know prison the phd um dot com or dot org you know people like to see that and it, you know and it, it makes your brand stand out in a really positive way all right so um the, um we were just talking about um the importance of having your domain with that extension at the end because of the credibility that you get from the general public as well as um potential potential funders and such so when you're, you know, for your domain, it's great for search, 
brand building professionalism and access to tools as we just discussed. So choosing your domain name is per and really important, just like building your brand, um, depending on what your what your name is. Um, it's good to have a lot of times. So I have a book called Selling to Freedom, right? I don't have a I don't have that domain, but that may be taken. So you might decide to put felony the number two freedom. You know, it may not always be, you know, the exact thing. Sometimes you have to shorten it. Short, shorter domains are harder to get, but people really like um, short domains. Even though people aren't necessarily always typing them in like the way they used to, it doesn't have to be too short. Um, but you don't you want it to be short because you want to be it, you want it to be memorable. You want people to remember what your website is, even if they don't have the link in front of them. And so that's why I think that even though people aren't necessarily typing them anymore in anymore, it's easier for them to communicate it and it's easy to spread your business and your website through word of mouth if you have a very simple and concise domain name. So again, there we go. Google agrees. So um Make sure that you're sticking with your brand, the consistency, you know, you don't want to have, you know, a bakery or something over here and then your domain name is totally unrelated. You want your brand name to be very closely aligned to your domain name. And again, consider alternate endings, consider dot, um, dot info. For example, my website name is www.desispeaks.life. I thought that was cool because my Instagram is also desispeaks.life. So it may not be as popular as .com, but I thought it was different. I kind of liked it, so I went with it. Again, you have, you have .org, you have .net, you have .us. There's so many different extensions that can be used that may even be more affordable than a .com. Design thinking. Um, if anybody would like to take a, a break, if anyone has any questions, um, this is a great time to do so. Um, if you have some tea, I have some yummy grapes right here. I'll be snacking on about 30 seconds, feel free to, you know, take a breather, stretch your legs. Um, I've been running my mouth for about 30 minutes already, so this is a great time to ask questions as well. While we wait, I think I want to try to send you all um, that folder that I was just talking about. So let me get everybody's email address. Since I can't necessarily add it to this list, I'm going to make sure I get it all to you as soon as possible. Does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> anyone have any questions? While I die from this grape skin? Okay. I'm sending the email out now. And I think this is good, too, because you'll be able to follow along with some of the things that we're going to be talking about. All right, it's a folder, online enterprise. Um, there's also, I'll just send all the documents. You should be receiving them within the next minute or so. Okay, subject intro to online enterprise. Docs and videos and bed list. All right, I'm going to send it now. There's not going to be much of a, of a body to the email, but you get the point. Okay, where are we? Okay. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. This is the process for designing your product or service. So these are examples of um, design thinking, um, on-demand television, foot activated car doors, right, ride and home sharing. These are all design thinking, um, well thought out products that are actually extremely successful. I've never tried the foot activated car door to be honest, so can't speak on that one. All right, your goal, connect to your user story, emotions, and insights about them. Like, who is the audience? Who is your audience? How do you connect with this individual? Um, are you speaking to justice-impacted individuals? Are you speaking to mothers that are returning to the workplace? Are you um, speaking to high net worth individuals? All of this matters because it really, really, really um, 
it really controls what messages that you need to send in, the way you communicate them, what the branding looks like. So this is examples of the users that we're talking about, you know, whether it's women of color, they may be looking for a social conscious brand. Parents of, um, you know, children that are not yet school aged, seniors, these are, um, the branding for that will be totally different. They have totally different attention spans and interests. Um, and college students, you know, they're, they're very busy. They don't have a lot of time to engage in long articles or even boring looking texts, you know, they, they're, they're looking for the information and, and they're trying to move on. Um, inspire new thinking. I love the idea of planting seeds of thought, you know, with people. So when you select the audience, like, how do you stimulate them to stay engaged? You know, what are you, what are you saying that makes them want to come back to your brand? Like, how do you retain that customer base and, and grow it? You know, how do you, you want them talking about you, you know? So your goal is to, um, analyze the landscape and figure out like how you can how you can solve a problem what solutions do you bring to the table um are you helping um mothers figure out ways that they they can homeschool or providing homeschool solutions or curriculums or you know what is the issue that you're noticing that you could potentially um bring bring a solution to the table for your goal what is it that you want? What is your goal for your brand? Um, what do you need to attain? Like, do you want to be a corporation? Do you want to remain a, a small boutique business? Like all of that, you know, clarifying the vision. They say write the vision and make it plain because you don't want to, you know, be spinning your wheels in a direction when it's not even where you want to go. When you're able to clarify that vision, it's easier to stay the course and to uh, make decisions that lie in the, in the appropriate direction that you're going in. You don't want to you know, you know that you want to be in this direction. You something can't come and be tempting, and that's pulling in a totally di different direction than your vision because you're really, really clear on where you're trying to go. So, defining that goal and clarifying your vision is essential as well. And prototyping. So, you want to figure out your minimum viable product. So, that's basically the 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 product that you're designing. So, if you're actually doing a tangible product or even a service. You have to think about the different levels of a viable product. So this is an example where they have someone doing a prototype for a car. Um, you're not looking to just do a wheel or, you know, a wheel base. And you're looking for, okay, first we have a, a skateboard. Then we have a skateboard with a handle. All of these are products on their own. They're all full and complete products on their own, but they level up with, with each model that you prototype. Um, so I think Google thinks that it's really important that you're starting with products that evolve in a, in a particular direction that'll get you to your end goal. Um, so all throughout the process, now you have five different products. If if that's if that's the lane that you choose to go in, and and it's all beneficial because you're growing and you're able to measure that growth. And it's not like a lot of years being spent spinning your wheels and hoping that you get to a technology that becomes obsolete by the time it's developed, because all along the way, you've been developing a system, you've been developing products that each of them are, are valuable on their own. Pick out your feasible ideas and flesh out what would be a best solution. So what do you need? Um, what technology? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm moving my picture around. This companion mode is a, a bit distracting for me, my ADHD. <laughs> um, what do you need to get this get get this prototype done? Uh, what technology do you need? How much money do you need? What resources do you currently have available? Are you working with you know your own funding and savings? Do you have family? Do you have um, investors? So just basically figuring out what you have and what you're able to do with what you have that helps you to with the whole product planning process for your prototype, and then testing is the last step to that. You wanna test the complete products and make sure that it's like, if you like it, um, people around you, if this is something that you would purchase and you have confidence in it, make sure that you're serving a good product to the community. Um, make sure that everything you do is with high levels of integrity. Quality is extremely important because you can have the best pictures on social, you can have amazing marketing and all these things, but if your product is inferior, there's no longevity there. Um, it's very, very important that you're testing your product, making sure that you're giving your best, um, making sure that your supply chains are resilient because you can have a product and you didn't test 
different vendors, sh test the shipping times, look, in, look ahead to forecast what changes might be coming in regulations and sanctions and your vendors to make sure that you'll be able to stand sustainably provide that product to your customer base. It's really, really important to test all of those parts of your process. All right, so how can we use design thinking today? Um, does anyone want to chime in here? Um, you could put something in the chat. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Let me know if you got it and I could just move forward. Let me know. I'm here to serve and I'm on your time. So we can move right along. But if you have any questions, this is a great time to ask questions or to offer any insights of your personal experience with design thinking. If not, I'll just keep going. And I, again, I appreciate your attendance. All right, so this is a reminder of the process. Yolanda, oh, look at you. <laughs> You're so sweet. All right, reminder of the process. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. What's your action plan? And um, in the email I sent, there was like a, a form that um, gives you like steps um, for using different tool, different digital tools and um, skill sets that Google has to offer so that you can get all of this stuff done really easily and free um, using Google services. So um, it should make the entire process more efficient for people that are beginners or they may wanna migrate from an expensive service like I recently did <laughs> using Microsoft 365 to um, using, Google's, using Google services, which are, um, equally as efficient and a lot less expensive. So connect with the business, um, Google business profile. A lot of you may be familiar with the Google business profiles. Um, they even like send you emails like once a month or so. Like this month, 1400 people looked at your business profile um, and it's free. You can basically like attach a domain to it. You could attach it to um, a domain specifically to your Google business profile, but you can also link it to the products and things that you have on your website. And it's basically like your little storefront in Google business. Um, one thing about the Google business profiles that I will say um, could be an issue for businesses that are not brick and mortar is that they love to have an address for you. And if you don't have an address or like you say, your food truck or something that's more mobile, um, they, I'm not sure that they um, are able to, um, promote your business as easily. All right, because they use the map, so there you go. This is an example of how um, the Google business profile looks on um, various platforms, whether it's a tablet, laptop, or mobile phone. They're very efficient, I find it, um, I use this all the time. So not necessarily as a business owner, but as a consumer, I'm always looking, like I'm Googling, using pulling up Google Maps, any city I'm in, best pizza place, um, best nail salon best this than the other. I'm looking at the reviews. I'm looking at the pictures. I'm looking at all these things before I even click on the website. I don't even click on the website until I look at what Google says about their business, what the reviews are and all these things. So because of the fact that I know how much I use it, I know other people are using it. You can guarantee that if you're using something and you rely on something everywhere you go, other people are probably doing the same thing. And if you don't like it, just like your product, if you don't like it, other people aren't going to like it either. If your cookies are nasty, no one's buying them things. Major key. So, <laughs> Janessa, don't encourage my foolishness. All right, so collaborate, meet, and work remotely. Look, it's, it's like three, ask me some questions because we're almost done this thing. Um, it's 3.40 and we want to talk about collaborating, meeting, and working remotely. Again, like I said, this is a mix-up of different um, Google. The foolish, this is why I came. Ah, that's why I messaged you. Okay, so um, I think it's really important that we talk about collaborating, meeting, and working remotely. Um, like I said, this is like a mix-up of various Google full, full lessons. But um, I work remotely. Like I said, I do defense work but I also run a nonprofit, but I find so much success in meeting with my nonprofit team, um, whether we're doing our quarterly all hands meetings or whether I'm just engaging with my fundraising team every week. Um, that's really important to be able to navigate this virtual landscape for an independent business owner, but even learning how to do it as a, um, as a, in, a in your career, you know, utilizing Microsoft Teams, like, 
they get they set so many meetings if you're not able to collaborate and effectively have these conversations back and forth it's going to be hard going forward in virtual enterprise and it's going to be hard um basically just working with people virtually in your own career because I mean, they're always setting these meetings. There's so many different standards of etiquette and how to interact with your team. And, you know, just they love engagement, but it's important to be able to focus your mind, especially if you're working from home and try to clear your environment. If you're like me and have four kids, it's very, very difficult. And when I saw this, I'm like, I need to share it because I wish someone would have told me sooner. Okay, so it's important to try to keep your routine um, every morning, get up, um, you know, check your emails if that's what you do, um, you know, go right into making your phone calls, like just figuring out a way to keep that day productive and in a way like that you just know what's coming next, you know, especially as a business owner. If you're going to do that, if you're going to keep a schedule for somebody else, please, please, please do the same thing for yourself. Don't work harder for someone else. So you're going to work for yourself. Like when I find myself being stressed out and working for someone else, I actually go and I work doubly as hard for myself because I feel guilty. Like I'm going to work for these people that don't care about me, but the work that I do for my family feeds my children. So I need to put in that work, if not more, for my business. So create your custom spot. So if you do that for remote work, you know, in a corporate world, do the same thing for your online business. Do your little office. Even if you just put like a nice little cute corner, you know, with a little desk in it or put yourself a nice comfortable chair with like a little lap table or something. Get yourself a candle, you know, put some flowers there, have your water bottle. Just, you know, schedule your lunch breaks. Don't sit there all day. You know, keep your body moving. Health is wealth. You know, just, just stay like keep yourself in a balance. You know, it's really important to maintain your energy level levels, especially if you're you're working and you're also starting a business. Um, you don't want to burn out. Burnout is real, especially in the remote work and remote and online enterprise environment. Make sure you have the tools. Like I said, Google has a lot of free tools that if you're just starting, you got sheets, you have <clears throat> you have slides, you have, you know, meet, you have the calendar. Very, very efficient, very reliable tools. Um, give your coworkers grace. Give your, you know, your employees or your partners or, you know, your family members. You know, a lot of times it's frustrating and try not to take those frustrations out on the people that support you and care about you. Um, and if you're not at work, don't work. That's one thing, too. Working from home, it's so hard to separate it once you get off. You may have interactions that are frustrating and you close your laptop and you're still sitting there till 9 p.m. thinking about this interaction with this person. You had a Karen this week. You know, I can't say that, you know, but, you know, you had just different frustrating things that happen. You have to figure out a way to separate yourself. Um, that work life harmony is really, really, really important. So when you're not working, just try your best not to be working and, and not to be overly thinking about work because um, that obsessive behavior can end up being damaging and can um, contribute to that burnout. Communicate from anywhere. So this is Google Meet. This is what we're doing. Um, Janessa was on here with me and my son earlier as I was troubleshooting and I felt like I was prepared, but sometimes you are so prepared and you get into the space and it's like, okay, what links? How come I'm not getting the right, you know, so that's why I have a couple of cameras on right now because I'm just like, um, Google Make makes it, Google Meet makes it easy, but you know, when you're working with Zoom and you're working with Teams and you're working with so many different platforms for these virtual meetings, it can get confusing. So. Um, I find that Google Meet has been easy for me. They offer um, free one hour meetings for up to 100 people, which is really cool. Um, I decided to go ahead and get the pro membership, which gives you um, an extended amount of time as well as a larger group and as well as the ability to record your meetings, which is important. So this meeting is also being recorded. Later. Uh, my mom. Do you say what is? Oh, in, in the living room. Okay. Google me. So here you are. So with the pro, with the pro plan, like I have, um, I can host up to 500 um, participants and record the meetings. And so that is the reason I decided to pay for it. I think, I think it pays it's like about $11 a month, a little bit less than that. Um, and it gives you two, um, tera, it gives you two terabytes of data, um, storage. And so that's been really, my mom is distracting me. I'm sorry. No, that's mine. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> Excuse me, she was my candle. I told you I'm serious about my candles, y'all. She's taking my candles and my grapes. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, we're trying to refocus here. We are wrapping up, so I'm, try I'm not trying to keep you all today. Literally, the two hours that was allotted for this meeting was a buffer. Um, I do not like long meetings, but I want to give you all this information. All right, so this is exactly what we were just talking about regarding the free and the paid plan. I thought the paid plan was beneficial for situations just like this. But if you're just doing brief meetings with your team, the free has everything that you need. I do like to record. So if you want to record it, I think it may be worth the investment and just cutting out some other things like Netflix. I don't know. But uh, that's what I did. Um. So how your business can benefit from Google Meet, like we just talked about it, um, just connecting remotely, brainstorming ideas with your team, um, and then the client consultations. You know, you may not be with your team. You may want to schedule a nice um, professional virtual meeting with one of your clients, and Google Meet has the tools to get it done, and hosting online classes um, are cool too. So um, Google Meet and Google Calendar, they sync seamlessly. That's one reason I really like it. Um, similarly to um, Outlook and Teams, um, but again, like I said, these tools are free, and I think that they're um, extremely beneficial to small business owners, people that are growing their business and learning how to use these tools also for the first time. How to do it, again, um, a lot of these things will be outlined in those documents that, that I sent over, so um, you don't have to worry about me running my mouth about each of these details right now. You'll find it in those documents that I just slammed you all with a moment ago. Really cool too, because you could just go to the go to the calendar and you set your meeting up, and then you put in there um, add Google. I mean, add um, video conferencing details, and then once you add that, it puts like that meeting link there, and then you add your guests. And so when you add your guests, they automatically get the email. And it automatically has the um, meeting invitation, in, the meeting link in it. And we just did, 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 did this together. So you probably got the same thing from me. It's so, so simple. And then the documents that I sent was also a list of video content. So if you don't want to just read over all the documents, there are various video playlists that can show you how to do this. Because if you're a visual learner like I am, reading all the words, could be tedious you might want to see someone walk you through the process and follow along with in a kinesthetic style all right there you go a little bit more for me can add details about the meeting it'll show right up in the recipient's um, inbox makes it very simple for them because they don't have to add meeting links and all the details and things you can set the reminder you know 30 minutes a day before all those things and they receive it the same way that you sent the way you set it up for them all right, there you go. As we just discussed, we're flying through this, y'all. We might be done in an hour. That's how I like it. <laughs> so yeah, they can um they click that meeting join with Google Meet. Did um just give me a, a thumbs up or anything? Did anybody? Did everybody join with this method? Did you join directly through um the email link um a Google Calendar? Okay, how'd you do it, Dante? Did you um, go through the community with the, at the Google page, or how'd you join us today? I actually joined from the uh, email invite. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you for um, coming off the coming off the uh, the mute. It was nice hearing your voice. Oh, we all question. Thank you mm -hmm. for having me. Of course, of course. How the meetings look? They look like this. So this is kind of self-explanatory right here. And again, I'm I'm looking at you right now from my cell phone and um my computer using companion mode all right so this is the last part about it is like how to successfully coach your team 65 percent of startups fail because of people related issues and i think this is important to just discuss really briefly how to keep your team happy um but at the same time making sure that you have an efficiently run um organization communication is key 10 attributes of good good managers can anybody guess what these could be and i'm gonna keep going if you're guessing create an inclusive environment it's not just about diversity equity inclusion all those new jargons 
emotionally mature, yes, yes. Yep, I know I was nowhere near as good of a leader when I was less mature, more ego driven, and I want to be right. And like, no, no, I want to, I want to be successful. I want smart people telling me the right answers. Yeah, flexible, absolutely. Empowers the team, and that you don't micromanage. That's important too. Like, if you have people on your team that you feel are not competent enough that can get the work done, then you might want to just reevaluate. You know, your hiring practices. Yeah, I love ethos. I love that. I love it a lot. Yeah, we should make this lie, Yolanda. <laughs> Support career development and discuss performance. <laughs> it just tap me in. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Yes, I love it. I'm I'm a student. I'm a student, so I'm very excited about that. You know, you shouldn't have said that because I'm a I'm a contact you. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Be a good coach. That's really important too. Like caring, just caring. Like that love ethos. Like care you know it's not just about the productivity like people are you know we're going through things like just at work last week we had like a suicide awareness seminar because like people are really going through so many things and your team could really be dying while you're pushing productivity so you know be good be compassionate be a good communicator um have a clear vision and strategy for the team you know strategy is very important strategy and preparing your team so you can collaborate toward a very specific direction Yes, people quit leadership, not jobs. That is the truth. That is the truth. Because you could have a very tedious job. But if you have the right leader, you'll do you'll do it every day and you love your team. Like I totally, totally agree. Productive and results oriented, collaborate. Be a strong decision maker. That's true. I like that. And have key technical skills to advise. Know what you're talking about. <laughs> know what you're talking about you know yeah a lot of managers lose credibility because they're like barking orders but they've actually never done the work themselves so we all know this all right be a good coach we're loading did do it does anyone have any um insights or thoughts on those those qualities that we just shared while this loads i just think a lot of environments are toxic and we've been in a pandemic moment for a long time and a lot of people haven't changed one bit and i would just it's so funny that you put up the leadership piece because i was thinking of that this morning how many jobs have i had and the uh it was individuals not so much um not even the culture of the company but the but the mindset and the affect of people that were in leadership roles and i wonder how much brands think about um their hiring practice and how they're hiring people that are emotionally and mentally unwell yeah yeah and then their state it's almost like you set them out like a feral dog in an environment <laughs> where they have to lead like you look at you know i'm not trying to be political or anything no. but you look at one of the most recent presidents would you let him babysit your kid would you let him house sit for you i wouldn't let any of them <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, so yeah, that's true yep but then that's they hire true. people in c-suite roles yeah and then you and then they're charged with hiring people and bringing them into a team to meet the objectives initiatives of the brand yeah and people are being harmed yeah, this is who you're stuck with. You're just stuck with them. You have no option, yeah, unless you leave. It's 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 careless and inappropriate. And I'm like, why aren't we suing these people for yeah. what they what they do to us? Like, I'm in um, a black careers group. Then I'm gonna stop talking. And it's like okay. one post after another of harm, intentional harm. That toxic word culture is all over the place. Yeah. So. I think, I think this is powerful like that's why we have these discussions too is because like as we emerge as as leaders in um in business spaces and even political spaces like what have we learned through generations of working with corrupt under corrupt leadership like how do we establish brands and businesses and organizations that actually serve from with that love ethos like how do we change the narrative because that is ridiculous like we can have all of these type of 
you know, programs and things that talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Governments can be funding organizations to make these changes, but people are still toxic mentally and they're still in leadership roles and they'll find a way to still cause harm. And yeah, so and, I, and I and I I would couple what you said because you said like a whole library right there, um, but I think another reason why you see so many brands coming out is because they couldn't stay in these corporate environments, and even when they were trying to uh, collaborate with other brands, they saw the illness. Yep. So we're getting iterations of the same thing over and over. I mean, how many sons do we need? How much? Why are we keep re recreating fire? We have son a son. We have fire. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But people aren't willing to do, or if they do collaborate and there's harm, they pull back and then they go create their other thing. So you'll have 75 organizations dealing with breast cancer, but no collaboration around what does a organization do well and what does our organization do well? Yeah. And then, um, then another organization can come in and fill the gap between the letter A and the letter R. But we don't do that because that's not really the model in America to collaborate. It's to think about scarcity in mm -hmm. everything we do. Yep, crabs in a barrel, yep, on all levels. So anyway, um, that's the end of my sermonette. My name is Yolanda Brown. Thank you. I appreciate you, Yolanda. <laughs> You're shining a light. I appreciate it. We appreciate it, yep. It's because it's good, it's good to hear that because you recognize that people all over the place are going through similar things you know and and people like with consciousness like yours and people in this group if we're able to like to step up and start creating these things like we can really start changing things and so um i'm very i'm really hopeful about the future i'm really hopeful about the future the more i meet um like-minded um um entrepreneurs right i mean to be honest like a lot of this is extremely self and self-explanatory but um there we go. So um, keeping the balance and the feedback that you give, like you want to make sure that when you're communicating with people that are having difficulties in your organizations, you're letting them know what they did good, what they did good, what they did good. You don't want to call them because you still also want to let them know what can be improved because you want to make sure that you're still running it efficient, efficiently. You're still meeting your productivity goals and things and getting things done. But, you know, your people, you know, the human resources are so valuable. Like the people that you're serving, like the people that are under you are really people that you're serving. Um, we have in this conversation and it isn't, and there is a dire need for servant leaders, you know, people that actually care about about the people that are working for them because they we should be working for them as well. You know, we should be all working together. So, um, you know, maybe in charge, but you know, we have to still care about the people. And um, I think that's why I wanted to use this as a part of the closing of this entire conversation. Like building a brand is amazing. Like looking good, doing social media and starting a website and doing all these things and having domains and the emails and the funding and the prototypes and all these things. But if you're a poor leader, then what's the point? Like how successful are you really going to be? Like, you know, are you just going to be hurting people at the end of the day? So, um, so, um, these are, these, these, um, uh, basically more, um, information available uh, from Grow With Google on their YouTube channel. And those documents that I sent, I put, um, all of the lists that pertain to small businesses, um, playlists on YouTube and a document called, um, business building videos. And so that'll be one of the documents that'll have, um, at least four playlists, um, fill with like probably like 10 or more videos each. So there's a bunch of content for you to consume if you want to, you know, dive a lot deeper into this, as well as links to take you to some Google certification programs, project management, cybersecurity, um, UX design, and things like that, IT support. So all of these things are um, in your inbox now. And let me know, just feel free to email me at D Riley at the mastermindcoop.com or Desi at the mastermindcoop.com if you did not get any or if you want to just have more conversation or if you have an idea of, you know, maybe you want to do a lesson next time and I'll organize it instead of me talking, I'll be interacting, I'll be the Yolanda. <laughs> I'll be, you know, I'll interact and um and I'm looking forward to working with each of you. And um, oh yes, go ahead, Dante. Please, please. Um, thank you for um you know, presenting this session, I do have a question. Like, how does how does one you know start these partnerships, and you know, um, do you get paid for this? 
no <laughs> but um so i did this too because we're grantee so the mastermind cooperative which is an organization that i founded um is a grantee from reform alliance um and they have a grow with google partnership and so um our organization partnered with grow with google through reform alliance and they made this service available to us so i couldn't wait to get um to put something together to share with the community and that's how it happened like no i'm not being paid for it but um i do love um connecting with people and, and sharing information as quickly as possible so um we got access to this about a week and a half ago maybe two weeks ago and so i decided to put something together and present it and that's why it, you know just kind of came up so quickly on most of your social medias but um, i'm grateful that i got a chance it's a very intimate group and very engaging group and i i wouldn't have had it either any other way and so thank you all for attending and um you know let's just stay engaged we got it done in an hour <laughs> and um it's been awesome it's been awesome if you have any questions i'll stick around for like two or three minutes my baby's still asleep so we i'm lucky one more question about grants like what, what's the process for um getting becoming a grantee um we just apply for the grant so we applied last year um it was like a first year we were officially certified with the um got a determination from the irs and mm -hmm. the form alliance was our first um funder nice um that's the year that they decided they launched their um community grant program and it was in pennsylvania because you know they're kind of built, built around meek mill story and okay. Pennsylvania was just, you know, I, well, we're from Philly, so like Philadelphia, like this origin story, they ended up focusing that particular grant on, in Pennsylvania. So they were really instrumental in getting our nonprofit off the ground, really supportive. And this year they had a nationwide grant, a national grant available, and we applied and we were selected again. And so that's how um, we're just, you know, maintaining our relationship with Reform Alliance. And they have seminars and things and resources like this they make available for us to, you know, serve to the community and as well as the pa safety coalition where they're right now working on getting um senate bill 838 passed and um yeah so they're they're working really hard and getting bills passed all over the country right now um you know for parole and parole reform and probation reform yeah and i've been uh, mentioned is uh incredible work and um, you know i appreciate you providing the service of course and um if i hear anything else like let me know we can stay tapped in and i'll send you any information from them as any other grants come out you know you know we can just stay engaged so um just let me know i've um i think i saw in your email that you're from prison to um, phd and i really 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 am impressed by that vision and what y'all do so i would love to um stay connected oh absolutely all right um but um that's that's all i have for you all today unless you have anything else for me i'm so grateful that y'all tuned in today and stayed the entire time I'm surprised my son did quick didn't he but uh <laughs> yeah i appreciate y'all i'm trying not to say i love you but i'm gonna go <laughs> and thank y'all for um for attending y'all have an amazing week rest of your weekend and next week Likewise. bye now <laughs> <laughs>